All right, so going on, we'll do uh, questions 28 and so on. All right, so it says researchers want to know if drinking caffeinated drinks improves reaction time. They randomly select volunteers in a blinded experiment, give some of them caffeine caffeinated drinks and others non-caffeinated drinks, and then they record reaction time. 30 people drink, uh, a drink had a drink containing 300 milligrams of caffeine. Their average reaction time was 580 milliseconds with a standard deviation of 110. 25 people had a drink with no caffeine, zero milligrams of caffeine. The average reaction time was 640 milliseconds with a standard deviation of 130. Is this evidence that drinking caffeine improves reaction time? All right, so it says uh, we're gonna do one sided hypothesis test. What should the hypotheses be? Okay, so are we dealing with means, proportions, one sample or two samples? Okay, we have two samples. And we're dealing with means. All right, so the null hypothesis some question that you have to sit and think, should this be greater than or less than, depending on how the question is written. So you have to, you have to pause to think a little. Is that okay? Does, it, does this make sense? Good questions? Alright, so what is the observed difference here, we're going to do x bar 1 minus x bar 2, and so that's 580 minus 640, I have negative 60 milliseconds, that's my answer 29. The test statistic, or the t statistic, all right. Our standard error is part of their answer. We got to do S1 squared over N1 plus S2 squared over N2. So I have 110 over 30 plus <coughs> 130 <coughs> squared over 25. This gives me 32.85, okay, 32.85. So my test statistic is going to be negative 60.5. 
So 32, our, if our alpha is 5%, what is the conclusion we make? Do we reject or not reject? We reject, uh, reject, reject, right? We reject the null hypothesis. So we say we have evidence. Good with everyone? Does someone have a blank sheet of paper here? Okay. 
Alright, just because I like you guys, we'll do uh we'll do uh this is attendance bonus, alright? Okay, so uh so uh number number and uh put your name on here and then uh and if you're you're on here I will add two points to your final exam score. Okay? So, so whatever you have, you get <laughs> so, so every little bit helps, right? Yeah. So again, don't don't cheat. Let me just get a quick count. So the number of names on here should match the uh, the number of students in the class. Okay, if uh, if it mismatches, like there's more names on here, then then you guys won't get your points. Okay, so so, so don't don't sign in your friends. Is all I'm saying. Okay, just sign in yourself. Don't sign in your friends, and we will add two points yeah, to your final exam score. Okay. Not, not, not your final grade, okay? Just your <laughs> final exam. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> to get through, and uh, we'll be done. All right. In a certain city, a study was conducted to see if the police department had a different proportion of minority employees than the fire department. Researchers randomly selected 200 employees from both the police and fire departments and took note of whether the employee was a minority or not. Of 200 random police department employees, 80 of them were minorities. Of 200 random fire department employees, 50 of them were minorities. Okay. Is this evidence that the two departments have different proportions of minorities? Okay, so one sample or two samples? Two, two samples. 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 Or means or proportions? Proportions. 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 Okay. Two samples, proportions. We're doing a hypothesis test. What is our hypothesis? P1 minus P2 equals zero. That means they have the same proportion. And the alternative, P1 minus P2 not equal. not equal to zero, right? We just want to know if they're different. We didn't say, does this mean the police department has fewer minorities or more minorities, <laughs> minority employees, things like that. Okay? <laughs> All right, number 35. For this hypothesis test, what is the value of P hat. So P hat is the total success over the total observed. So we're going to do 80 plus 50. This is the total number of minority employees observed over the total number of employees that we surveyed. So we do 130 over 400, and that turns out to be 0.325. What is our test statistic? Okay, so a few parts to this. One is we got to figure out our standard error. The standard error is not the test statistic, but <coughs> one step along the way. So I'm going to do 0.325 minus 0.1 minus 0.325 times 1 over n1, so 1 over 200. and I get 0 0.04684. That's my standard error. Okay. But the 
test statistic, my z-score is going to be p1 hat minus p2 hat divided by my standard error. So what is p1 hat? This is the proportion of minority employees at the police department. 80 divided by 200, 40%. p2 hat would be the minority employees of the fire department. 50 divided by 200, 0.25. And when I do that, I get a test statistic of 3.20. Okay. So what do I do now? For the p-value, I go to my z table, okay? So Pat, this is where you just get a number directly. You don't uh, don't need to do a range, okay? So for my z table, look up 3.20, and you get 0.9993. Okay, that's the area to the left. All right, we want the area in the tail. So I get uh, 1 minus that, that's 0 0.0007, and do I leave this as is, or do I double it for my p-value? Double. I double it, because my no, uh, alternative hypothesis has a not equal sign. So my p-value is equal to 2 <coughs> times 0 0.0007, so that I get 0 0.0014, this is my p-value. What do we do? Do we reject or don't reject? Okay. Uh, it doesn't give us an alpha. So if it doesn't give you an alpha, what do we assume? Five. five. We assume five percent, right? We assume alpha is point zero five. Is point zero zero one four smaller than that? Yes. So we reject. Draw that? I mean, you didn't no, I mean, do it. No, I mean, you don't have to draw the picture. It just okay. helps you. Yeah. It, it helps me. I think it helps most people who yeah. draw the picture, but um, it's not required. It's multiple choice. Oh, right. There's no, uh, you don't need to draw pictures on your Scantron, okay? <laughs> that would actually be discouraged. That would probably mess you up, okay? of this problem, what does it mean to commit a type 1 error? Okay, so type 1 error is we've rejected the null, but the null is true. Okay, so just a refresher. So this is not what it is. This is just the definition of type 1 error. 
Reject that just means we come to the conclusion that they are different. Or, un yeah. huh? or unequal. Not or unequal. You come to the wrong yeah. conclusion. Okay, potatoes are sold at the grocery store in five pound bags. You decide to take away a random selection of ten different bags. And you find that the average weight of these bags is 5.2 pounds with a standard deviation of 0.3. Is this evidence that the bags at the grocery store have a mean weight different from five pounds? We're going to make a 95% confidence error. Okay, so number 40, how many degrees of freedom do we have? Oh, I should say, what do we have? We got one sample, and we're dealing with meat, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, our sample size is 10, so our degrees of freedom is 9, 10 minus 1. 41, what is the value that goes in the center of the interval? That's going to be x bar. What is x bar in our problem? 5.2. Standard error, S over the square root of N, so that's going to be 0.3 divided by the square root of 10, 0 0.0949.
right. Is this evidence that it's different from five pounds? No. Five is within my interval.
divided by 100. And when I do the math there, I get 0 0.03727. Differently, do you say get another way? Differently than one sixth of the time. Different. But it lands on four. Uh, not one sixth of the time. <coughs> yeah, and that is the way you have to say it, right? Yeah, I think you yeah. have to say differently than one sixth of the time. Not, or land on four, not, not one sixth. One sixth of the time. I think it's okay to say differently. You can't say that it could you say it once one sixth of the time. It does not land on four. No. Yeah. I like the other one. Yeah. Uh, however you write it, okay? We're not rejecting the null. <laughs> we don't have evidence that this is wrong. We're not gonna write it on the test. You're no, you're I have I have the answer it. choices and okay. you just have to pick the one that sounds the best, right? right? One of them is correct, okay? <laughs> and they'll be close. He's <laughs> gonna mix your head so much, I'm sure. Unless we are. <laughs> I'm really not trying to be me. No. But I do have a job. I do have a job. I gotta make sure you do actually kind of know what you're talking about, okay? Like, if I say, someone tell me what a standard deviation is. It's the distance from Right. Standard deviation. From the mean. It's the distance. How many units from the mean? You're thinking a z-score thing. Standard deviation is a measure of spread. The measure of spread tells us uh, maybe the typical distance from the mean. All right, well, anyway. 
That's a good, that's a good one to know. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. I don't know. I, I, I can't give away all the answers here. Okay. <laughs> Number 50. All right. Major League Baseball. So these are the sampling questions, right? We have questions on sampling methods. So that was all I did last week. I told you four different sampling methods. Simple random sampling, stratified sampling, cluster sampling, systematic sampling. Yeah. You just got to know these things. Okay. Number 50 says, Major League Baseball wishes to conduct a survey of its players. Instead of trying to create a list of all the players from all their teams, uh, they decide to randomly select four of their 30 baseball teams, and then they're going to survey all of the players on the four selected teams. What kind of sampling is that? Cluster sampling. Good. Fifty-one. All right. Is that okay? Number yep. fifty. Cluster sampling. Okay. A company wants to survey its employees. The company takes its master list of everyone in the company and randomly selects a hundred of them for the survey. What kind of sampling is this? Simple, Simple random. A toll bridge wants to survey the drivers who use the bridge. Instead of trying to ask all the drivers, they decide to stop every time the car. And they ask for the uh, driver's opinions. What's that? That's a systematic sample. Okay. In my opinion, these are very easy questions. All right? So you're going to have four questions on the final exam. Like this. Right. It should be an easy four points, but inevitably some of you will get them wrong. Okay. That's just that's like <laughs> <laughs> And inevitably, as much as I hate it, uh, no, we don't have to go there. Okay. Fifty-three. A bar chart is used for what kind of day? Okay, so these, again, these exact questions will not be on the final, but these, there's going to be about 10 questions-ish that come from before the midterm, all right, or stuff, and there, there are no calculations involved, they're just straightforward questions like this, and you either know it or you don't, or you can sit and try to figure it out, but, so you know it or you don't. Okay, so a bar chart is used for what kind of data? Categorical. categorical. So a bar chart is for categorical data. So the questions will be just like these ones, sort of thing, yeah? Sort of, sort of, okay. All right, so, all right, hint, hint, if you're, it might be a good idea to say, okay, ask yourself, okay, a box plot is for what kind of data? Or a histogram is what kind of data? A dot plot is what kind of data? A a uh, frequency table is for what, or a uh, two-way table is for what, okay? You know? I asked, what's a bar chart? What kind of data does a bar chart do? But you can figure out related questions that may or may not appear in this uh, other section, okay. Is that okay? All right. In a normal model, approximately what proportion of data are within two standard deviations of the mean? 95. Yeah, approximately 95 percent. The empirical rule. All right. Yeah, the empirical rule says 68 is within one, and about 99.7 is within three. Okay. I don't know. All right, the intercept in linear regression would be our predicted value when x has what value? Zero. Yeah, when x is zero. Um, if we're not talking about the intercept, we might talk about the slope. You can try to think of what kind of question might be related to the slope. Or if it's not slope or intercept, what is else is related to that chapter? Correlation, things like that. Okay. All right. If the
probability of A and B happening together is zero, that means A and B are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive. Okay. Um, we might also talk about what does it mean to be independent? So what does it mean to be independent? The probability of one impact. Yeah, probability of one doesn't affect the outcome of the probability of the other. Okay. So probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. Right. If they're independent. Okay. So, so these are all things that you've learned and have been quizzed or tested on. And just do you re can you remember or recall these things? For a quantitative variable, if there's only one peak in the histogram, how would we describe the shape? Unimodal. That would be unimodal. All right. Uh, how would you know? How would we describe it if it were bimodal? There would be two peaks. What about uh, what, what does it mean for it to be symmetric? your center is, the further you get away from the center, you'll have, um, however many you have on the right, you'll have on the left, okay? Or what does it mean to be right skewed or left skewed, okay? So think about that, okay? 58, which measure of center is not influenced by extreme outliers? The median. The median. The median. Okay. What can we say about the mean? The mean is the balancing point of our data. The mean is our average that we add up. Okay. Uh, you know, standard stuff. I think uh, this this section of questions. Some students will do really well and get them all. And some students, like, they do well on the other part and then they just totally bomb this part out of the line. Okay. So, yes, but, uh, before we pack up and leave, any questions or anything? Everyone can leave, but there wasn't an example in here um, of the. Like we did one last week with 12 watermelons and 15 cantaloupes, and where we had to write the interpretation, like zero wasn't in the interval. So, like, how do you write the interpretation? And I don't know if it's a two. Uh, I think that was a. It's a two sample. Two sample mean confidence interval. I think we did one. Yeah, but zero was in the interval, so I understood the interpretation. Okay, so if zero is not in the interval, then that means you have evidence for a difference between yeah. the means. So the mean weight of watermelons is between so three, three and six five. Seven, yeah. Three point seven. Yeah. So you have evidence that there's a difference. <laughs>